So we are starting to develop an understanding of how to calculate carrier concentrations in silicon. Let's perfect that by looking specifically at pure silicon. So recall we are looking at pure silicon, that is silicon that has no impurities in it. And we can conclude that, that the concentration of charge carriers, and we have two types of charge carrier, holes and electrons can be calculated by multiplying the density of states available in each of the bands by the probability that there are electrons in these bands. So for the conduction band, we multiplied P of E by NC, B of E, which is the density of states in the conduction band. Uh, this tail, this small tail, will then multiply by this and give us this curve. This is the, the distribution of electrons in the conduction band. To find the total electrons in the material, we have to integrate over the entire conduction band, which gives us this area. Similarly, for holes, we have to multiply the density of states in the valence band by 1 minus P of E, because that's the probability that there are no electrons in the valence band. In the valence band, uh, the interesting thing is if there are no electrons, because the norm is that there are electrons. The product will give us the, the distribution of holes in the valence band, and its integration is going to give us um, the total concentration of holes in the material. Now, we concluded that uh, the uh, density of electrons and holes can be uh, written as integration for electrons through the whole conduction band <coughs> of the density of states in the conduction band times P of E. And for holes, it is the integration over the whole valence band of 1 minus P of E times NVB of V. Now, these integrals can be uh, calculated um, and we can actually find a much easier uh, or much simpler expression for n and p than the integral form. So n can be uh, approximated as nc e to the power of minus ec minus ef over kt. <clears throat> and p is equal to nv e to the power of minus ef minus ev divided by kt. So we have to uh, look at the parameters of these two expressions to understand them and we already know uh, most of them so we know what EF is it is a fictitious energy level within uh, the band gap which represents the point at which it is equally probable to find a, uh, an electron and a hole EC is the uh, edge of the conduction band and EV is the edge of the valence band and so EC minus EF this amount is this distance, it's how distant EF is from EC. And EF minus EV is this distance, it is how high, high above EV EF is. So they are energy differences. Now, we are assuming, we're not assuming, we concluded that logically N is equal to P because any phenomenon that causes an electron to cross the band gap and go to the conduction band is also gonna leave behind an empty space, a hole. And so the concentration of electrons and holes is definitely going to be equal. This should tell us qualitatively, logically, that EF should lie more or less halfway through the band gap. We can see it graphically in this, in this case, and we can also see it from the equations, because they are both, N and P are both dependent on the difference EC minus EF and EF minus EV. If these exponents are to be equal, then these distances, these energy differ differentials have to be equal as well. But let's do this in a more systematic way. What are NC and NV? These are two parameters that we have not defined. NC and NV are constants, so they are different from NCB and NVB, because, for example, if we look at NV, it's equal to 12 into 2 pi mh kt by h squared, to the power of 3 over 2. And similarly, nc is equal to 12 into 2 pi me kt over h squared to the power of 3 over 2. So they are constants. They are physical constants. They are only functions of temperature, uh, Boltzmann constant, um, uh, and the effective mass of the hole and the effective mass of the electron. 
They are different from NCB and NVB because these were functions of energy. They were distributions in energy, right? They were curves, they were graphs. Whereas NCB and NV, whereas NV and NC are actual constants, they are numbers. So what are they called? NV is called the effective density of states at the edge of the valence band, and NC is called the effective density of states at the edge of the conduction band. What's happening here in these two expressions is that we are more or less substituting in P of E and 1 minus P of E with E equal to EC in this case and E equals to EV in the case of, of holes. So we are substituting for one energy value, which is the edge of the band of concern. And so these constants, they represent what the concentration of, of, of or the density of states would have been at the edge of the bands if the whole band was collapsed into a single energy level. So we are asking the question, we don't want to do this integration, we just want to substitute for this value of energy EC and this value of energy EV in the probability density function and still get the same hole and electron concentration. What is the corresponding single number that represents the concentration of energies at this edge if this entire band was collapsed into a single level? So that's what, what NC and NV actually mean. So let's equate the two, N and P. We have these two equations for N and P, and they are fairly simple equations. But we know that N is absolutely equal to P in, in pure silicon. And so let's equate the two together. And so we have NC e to the power minus EC minus EF over KT is equal to NV e to the power of minus EF minus EV over KT. And both are equal to a certain number NI. So Ni is called the intrinsic carrier concentration. Intrins intrinsic means pure. So it's the concentration of carriers in pure silicon or intrinsic silicon. And obviously we don't need to specify which type of carrier because both electrons and holes are gonna have the same uh, concentration in pure silicon. So N and P are equal to each other. And when we do that and start simplifying, we get uh, NC over NV. Uh, is equal to e to the power of minus ef plus ev and then we take the other uh, exponent to the other side and so we get plus ec minus ef and this is over kt and so now uh, we get uh, when we take a log we get ln nc over nv times kt is equal to minus 2 ef plus ev plus ec and so EF is then equal to EV plus EC over 2 plus KT len NV over NC over NV, NV over NC, I'm sorry. So this is EF, right? So EF, actually you expected it to lie in the middle of the band gap, which is this. EV plus EC over 2 is the middle of the band gap. It is the average of the two. It seems that it isn't actually at the middle of the band gap, and we have to explain why that is. We have this term, and this term is positive because NV is greater than NC, and so this term is positive, and we have to explain why the Fermi level is not at the middle. Now, is this term, the second term, is it big or small? This term is ln NV over NC, but it is multiplied by KT. KT is 25 milli electron volt, and EC plus EV over 2 is roughly 0 0.55 electron volt. It's EG over 2. And so the second term is small relative to the first term. And so what we are concluding is that EF, the Fermi level, is not exactly at the middle. It is slightly above the middle of, of, of the band gap, right? And it, 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 it is slightly above the middle of the band gap for a reason. And the reason is when we look at the expression of N and P, we notice that the only difference between them actually is in MH and ME. The effective mass of electrons in the conduction band and of holes in the valence band is different. In fact, MH is bigger than ME and therefore NV is bigger than NC. And so why is the effective mass of holes bigger than the effective mass of electrons? Because 
it is much harder for electrons to move in the crowded valence band than it is for electrons to move in the empty conduction band. And so if we go back to this graph, what this means is that the distribution of, of uh, holes here is actually slightly larger than the distribution of states in the conduction band because MH is bigger than ME and therefore the density of states in the valence band is slightly more than the density of states in the conduction band. But at the end of the day, we want this area to be equal to this area because N has to be equal to P. So the only way that that could happen is if this tail in the conduction band is slightly bigger than this tail in the valence band. And the only way for that to happen is for this point, the point at which the probabilities have to move a little bit up in uh, the band gap. And so that means that the Fermi level is going to be slightly above the band gap, the half of the middle of the band gap, to compensate for the fact that the density of states in the conduction band is smaller than the density of states in the valence band. And the densities of states are different because the effective masses are different. Now, when is the, uh, in, you know, are we going to use the fact that the uh, Fermi level is in the middle of the band gap or not? We are generally going to assume that the Fermi level in pure silicon is in the middle of the band gap because the second term in this equation is negligible. But when is it not negligible? When do we really need to take this into consideration? We, you can actually see from the equation that one case in which we need to look at, uh, at this effect is when temperature is high because the second term in the equation grows as the temperature grows. If the temperature is really high, then this term becomes comparable to the first term, which is 0.55 electron volt, in which case we need to take it into consideration.